this is a day tomorrow. You can start tonight, though. To really appreciate the life that you have, to appreciate the standard of living we all have, and to appreciate where it all comes from. And we know it doesn't come from any, uh, from, the, from the state, doesn't come from any mystical being, it doesn't come from, it comes from the human mind, it comes from reason, and it comes from great, great producers. So today, we're going to talk about production. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Adam Campbell. I think Adam is here. Yes, he is. Adam Campbell's here. So Adam sponsored today's show. You too can sponsor a show. Uh, I've got a bunch of uh, questions and and uh, and good topics that we're going to cover uh, that that Adam has sent me that he'd like he'd like to to hear my point of view on. So, uh, but it's it's a it's a great topic. It's a topic I've talked about somewhat in the past, but. Um, but this time, in the context of Thanksgiving and in the context of just just the context of Adam's questions and the context of uh, just what a fabulous world we live in and, and, and what a rich world we live in, um, it, this should be fun. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about this, uh, something important, important to everybody's life, all of our lives. And uh, after all, productiveness is one of uh, the seven virtues of objectivism. It is a key uh, uh, essential element. We'll talk about that in self-esteem. It's a requirement, I think, for having a, uh, a, um, a, a real self-esteem, a, a, a self a, a, um, uh, you know, the kind of sense of life and self-esteem that one needs in order to achieve happiness. So productiveness is not optional. Being productive is not optional. It's something that is necessary in human life. So let's first talk about the need to produce, the need to produce. And the need is, is, is very fundamental and very, in a sense, primordial, primitive, basic. And that is the fact that, as we've talked about many times on the Iran Brook Show, Nature just doesn't provide us with the means by which we survive. We don't get manna from heaven. We cannot survive on berries and nuts. We actually have to act. We actually have to think. We actually have to create the values that are necessary for us to survive at the very, very most basic level, never mind the more advanced levels of the modern world. So we have to produce hunting. We have to produce agriculture. We have to produce clothing. Animals don't wear clothes. They can only live in an environment whose climate is appropriate to the skin that they have, the fur that they have. They go out of that climate, they can't survive. This way, climate change is really, really bad for some animals. Not so bad for human beings. We can wear clothes, we can take them off, we can load up layers. We, we, we've got lots of options. Because we create our own food, but we create it, which requires production. It requires changing nature, taking elements from nature and restructuring them, reconfiguring them to fit human needs. And that's what production is fundamentally. It's changing the world around us, taking the, the elements that exist in the world around us, in nature, and reshaping them, re, re, restructuring them to fit our basic needs as human beings. That's what production is. And production is necessary for human life. Again, because we are not born with the tools, we're not born with the knowledge, we're not born with everything we need in order to survive. We're born with a mind, we're born with the capacity to think, to reason, and therefore the capacity to produce, but not with production itself. So to produce requires effort, requires will, requires reason, requires thinking on how and what, and it requires effort. It requires engagement. It requires a focus and, 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 and being motivated to do it. Now, at an individual level, 
at the most, again, at the most basic survival level, we as individuals produce the things that we need in order to survive for ourselves. But that is very limited. There's very limited uh, things that you can produce on a desert island all by yourself. It, it's just so time consuming. It's time consuming to build a hut. It's time consuming to fish. It's time consuming to do agriculture. It's time consuming to, to, to hunt. There's not enough time to invent electronics and build a microchip and, and, and build yourself a computer. You just can't do it. But very early on, human beings figured out that what they can do is specialize. Very early on, even in tribal societies, there was the beginnings of primitive and basic specialization. Some people were physically strong and fast and, 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 and they would go out maybe to hunt. Maybe somebody else was very good with their hands and had great ideas on how to build weapons. And somebody else maybe strategized about the hunt and somebody else ultimately specialized in agriculture. And, 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 and women were very good at, at, at taking the, the, the skins of the animals that the hunters brought back and turning them into clothes and maybe uh, y you know using the meat that they brought back to cook or to, or to produce food. But, and then basically there was a, a trade going on. I hunt you weapons, I give you food, you give me the weapon. There was constant trade. And as we become more and more and more specialized, human survival and human production is fundamentally guided by trade, by our ability to trade. We no longer produce our own food, our own clothes, our own things, not even in small groups. But today, the clothes that you wear is made probably in Vietnam or in Bangladesh. The computer is made in a million different places. It's maybe assembled in China. The, the iPhone is assembled in China, but has bits and pieces that are produced in, I think, 50, 60 different countries. So the essential characteristic of production today is that we must produce in order to trade. And therefore, the values we produce the values that companies produce must be tradable values. There must be values that are appropriate for trade and what makes something appropriate for trade that somebody else wants it, that it is a value to others, that it is a value to other people. That is production today is about producing not just anything you wish, not whim, not whatever you feel like, not work for the sake of work, but not even anymore producing the things that you actually are going to use in, a, in that sense, your values. No, you are going to trade for your values and you are going to produce values for other people, which links us all and creates, I mean, it's a, it's a truly, 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 Beautiful thing, production is. Production and trade, because it creates a harmony among human beings. It creates this beautiful, uh, uh, you know, uh, symbiotic, not symbiotic is the wrong word, this beautiful relationship among human beings where, where we are basically producing for one another. Now, it's ultimately for ourselves. But the way in which I take care of ourselves, the way in which I accumulate wealth is by producing for you. It's by figuring out what I think, you know, Steve Jobs, figuring out what he thinks my values are, what he thinks I would value, will value, what I am willing to pay for, and he produces it for me. Now, as I say in my talks, it's ultimately for him. But if I don't value it, if he's wrong about the value the iPhone represents for me, he doesn't get any benefits from it. Indeed, it's a net loss. Net loss. So 
Production means production of something of value to someone, whether it's yourself or other people. There is no production for the sake of production. I mean, this is the, 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 the mythology or the, 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 the fallacy of so much of Keynesian economics. You know, all we need is to have people, uh, you know, to reduce unemployment. We can hire them to dig holes and fill them back in. Dig holes and fill them back in. We'll pay them. We'll print the money to pay them. But that's not production. It's not trade. It doesn't add anything. The people who, fill the, who, who dig the holes and fill the holes back in are just moochers. They're just looters. They're, you know, where does the money come from? How do they get paid? Because only by taking from those who actually do produce, only by those who actually do create, build, make, one has to produce something that is of value to oneself or to somebody else. And if we're talking about mass production, then it has to be to other people because you can consume more than X amount of any product. And indeed, when we go to work, as, as you know, when we go to work and work, right, then we are producing a value to the, for the company that we're working for who is producing values to their customers. And the customers are providing the business with a value, money, which we get a portion of as employees, which then gives us the financial ability to go out and purchase the things that we value. And again, this is why there's such a harmony of interest. This is why it's such a beautiful integration all of our interests are integrated. All of our interests, in a sense, are consistent. There's no clash. There's no war. There's no conflict. So production, whether it's producing a good by reshaping the environment or producing a service, which is providing somebody with a value that might not be purely material, In all of those cases, our interests are harmonized. I, I'm doing it to make a living. I'm doing it hopefully because I enjoy it. I love doing what I'm doing. And you're getting something in return. Otherwise, you wouldn't pay the money. Otherwise, you wouldn't accept what it is that I'm doing. So, uh, you know, again, production and trade. I mean, one of the great evils in the world is this notion of exploitation this notion of, quote, consumerism, this notion of a world of exploited and exploited, exploited and exploiters of, of, of people just, uh, uh, you know, uh, whim-worshipping and, and, uh, and, and, and the, the, the great CEOs are meaningless, the great, the great producers are meaningless, the great entrepreneurs are meaningless. They, they just, you know, they're just... Uh, Paper shufflers, they produce nothing, they create nothing, they build nothing. When our whole life depends on what they are building, what they are creating, what they are making, and that we trade off of it. This idea that we should envy other people, that we should resent other people's success, when their success can only be achieved by making our lives better. So production, whether it's a product or service, is, uh, uh, is for trade and therefore inherently harmonizing. So kind of that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a reshaping of our world around us, creation of something new, a creation of a value that is valuable to Somebody, there's no such thing. This is an important objectivist point. There's no such thing as a value divorced from the question of for whom and for what. Ayn Rand talks about this. For whom is the value? A value might be for me, for you. You might have different values. And for what? There has to be purpose. Purpose, remember, is a cardinal value in Ayn Rand's ethics. What is the purpose? What do I need the value for? What is it there to achieve? 
So to produce some, something, there always has to be a for whom and a for what. What is the purpose? So uh, that is what production is. And we as individuals, in a sense, must be productive. And we must be productive because I think nature has wired us, and we are wired in particular ways, wired us to reward survival, <laughs> which seems kind of obvious. And production is necessary for survival. So even though today, in the world in which we live today, there are many people who live off of the state, who, who, who mooch off of the state, or who kids who never go to work and, and stay with their parents until late adulthood playing video games in the basement. Even though technically you can survive without producing, you're missing something. You're missing something fundamental to what it means to be human. Because to be human means to take care of yourself at some level, to, to contribute something to the trades that are going on, to contribute something to your own survival. And therefore, people who sit in their basement playing video games, people who do not work, people who live off of welfare, can never attain proper self-esteem. They can never attain the proper sense of themselves. What they never attain, if you will, is the confidence, the knowledge that they can take care of themselves that they are suited for this world, that they are one with both their biological nature and the environment in which they live. They grow up completely dependent on other people, whether it's other people vis-a-vis -vis the people who pay their welfare checks, other people vis-a-vis -vis their parents who pay for them to sit in the basement. So they grow up inherently almost second-handers, not dependent on their own mind, not dependent on their own reason, not dependent on their own effort, not dependent on their own work, but dependent on others for everything. And we're just, I mean, there might be a being somewhere in the universe where that is okay with. It's not with us because we know we don't fit in the world. We know we couldn't survive. We know we're not living consistently with our nature. And that is destructive to our happiness, to our self-esteem, to our self-confidence, to our ability, to our sense of life, to, 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 to just our sense of, I'm okay in this world. This is a world for me. I can take care of myself in this world. So it's... Um, it is, working is not, I mean, uh, uh, producing at, at whatever it is that you do, however it is, however much you, uh, whatever activity you choose to be productive, it could be art, it, it, it could be taking care of kids, it could be taking care of a, of a household, it could be going out there into the world and starting a company, it could be any one of those things, it could be just going to a job that you love and are excited about. Any one of those things are going to, Enhance your confidence. Yes, I can participate. And while I'm not producing the things that I wear, I'm not producing the things that I surround myself with, my production makes all these things possible. So production in that sense. So even though you're producing values for other people, you're working for other people, you're producing goods that other people will buy, you're not doing it as a sacrifice. You're doing it as a trade. You're doing it within the context of a win-win relationship. And again, this is why altruism breeds resentment. Sacrifice breeds resentment. Sitting in the basement of your parents playing video games breeds resentment. Being on welfare breeds resentment. Working, producing, creating, and then trading 
breeds love, respect, harmony, self-esteem. Now, so we live in an advanced society in which production is all geared around, uh, around tr trade. Um, you know, it is true that about 300 years ago, it was still true about 300 years ago, that a, a vast majority of human beings um, grew their own food, often produced their own tools, often produced their own weapons, although there was some trade, and, and certainly in the Western world there was already quite a bit of trade. But it is, it is uh, shocking how many people still think that self-sufficiency is somehow noble, that growing your own stuff is somehow noble and good, that um, countries building walls around themselves and not trading with anybody else is somehow a virtue, is somehow good, because, you know, the insularity of the tribe. When what you're giving up is the ability to produce and to trade with 8 billion people. Openness, globalization, global trade is one of the most beautiful things in all of human history. And the results are, are, are staggering in terms of the benefits to mankind. That compared to living on a subsistence farm where you're never going to be rich, you're stuck, you're dirt poor. And again, it's such a tragedy that we're living right now in a, in a time where globalization is frowned upon, trade is frowned upon, a buy local, buy from your, you know, grow your own food, whatever. That is noble in some way. It's also a tragedy, of course, that, and, and this relates to the environmentalist movement, a whole other topic, but that the means by which human beings survive, which is fundamentally going out there and changing nature, fundamentally going out there and taking the stuff from nature and reconfiguring it to suit our needs, that is being condemned, has been condemned, is viewed as evil and destructive and horrible and something that we as human beings should stop. Well, if we stop, we die. If we stop, we no longer survive. Now, of course, one of the great things about the way, you know, free people evolve is that we constantly seek to make our ability to produce and trade more efficient. And of course, one of the great innovations in all of human history to do exactly that is money. Now, we today think of money, and I think 99% of people think of money as just something the government gives us, the government creates. It's just there. It's just always been there. But money had to be produced. Money had to be created. Money is a product of innovation. It's a product of people trying to figure out how to do things more efficiently. Barter is not efficient. Trading your cow for chickens, your cow for cheese, not efficient. How do you, how do you, how do you provide change? Half a cow, quarter of a cow? You can't do it. So money is this great innovation that facilitates production and trade. It facilitates our ability to produce efficiently, effectively, and then it facilitates our ability to trade with 8 billion other people across oceans, anywhere, once money is accepted. And money today is accepted pretty much everywhere. So money is this amazing innovation, amazing product that is necessary for us and is linked directly to production. It, you know, money historically evolved to be gold. Gold had to be produced. Gold production was directly linked to the technology of every other thing that was produced. It was very difficult to mine for gold. In days where the economy didn't grow, the stock of gold barely grew. Once we had machines, stock of gold grew faster. Once we got even better machines, stock of gold grew even faster. As the economy grew faster. This is the beauty 
of a of a of a money that actually has to be produced. One of the great tragedies of the last hundred fifty years or so is that well, not 150 years, sorry. One of the great tragedies of the last 3,000 years or so is that because of its importance, because of how crucial money is to both production and to trade, because money facilitates, I mean, think about money facilitating the ability of me to produce values for you and to be compensated for it so that I can go and get my values. That is only really made possible by money. I produce stuff for you, I get money from you, I go out and buy the things I need for me. That's a beautiful thing, right? But money is so important, so crucial, that really from the beginning, governments couldn't keep their hands off of it. Uh, tribal leaders, kings, whatever the regime, the authoritarian regime of whatever period of time, couldn't keep their hands off of it. And they dominated and they monopolized it and they took it over. And in spite of the fact that time and time again, it is the market that innovated about money. Paper money is a market innovation. Electronic money is a market innovation. Government always swoops in and nationalizes and takes it. And by nationalizing it, taking it, taking it, it diminishes the effectivity of money and therefore diminishes production and trade. It centralizes control and centralizing the planning of money and money is the most important good we have because it facilitates all the other goods. So all of it diminishes our production, our trade, our standard of living, our quality of life. The more government dominates the money supply, the more it diminishes our quality of life and our standard of living. The more it manipulates it, the harder it is to produce, the harder it is to know, am I getting a fair price for what I'm producing? Am I paying a fair price for what I'm getting? How do we even come up with a fair price? Market signals are gone. Supply and demand is gone. Money is just what the arbitrary group at the Federal Reserve decides it is. All right. So, production is necessary for human life. Production is necessary for human flourishing. To produce is necessary for individual happiness. To produce is necessary for individual self-esteem. To produce is necessary for individual life. Producers are the people who make the world a better place to live in for all of us. To the extent that we produce, we are making the, better, the world a better place to live. And to say that, to say, I'm making the world a better place is not altruistic. It doesn't mean I care more about you than I care about me. On the contrary. I need to produce for my own self-esteem and happiness. But I also need to produce in order to get the money so that I can pursue my values, so I can create a beautiful environment around me, so I can go on wonderful trips, so I can buy the equipment that makes it possible for me to produce more. So again, the idea that you're making the world a better place to live is not an altruistic phrase. It is a fact of reality. It is a fact of reality that is necessary. It's necessary to make the world a better place to live in a world in which production and trade are the way, you know, are the way in which we live. It, it doesn't, it's, it's, there's no meaning to the concept of trade where you're losing, right? Trade is by its very essence win-win. Trade is by its very essence making the world a better place to live. Both parties, because it's a win-win transaction. So production means making the world a better place. That's from a completely egoistic perspective. What I care about is my ability to produce. To produce what? To produce values for use so I can trade for them. All right, so... 
you know, again, it's not altruistic to talk about it in those terms. In a true free market, in a market in which um, people are free to pursue their values and to trade with anybody and, and, and to, to, to produce and create and build and make and trade freely, you know, our, our quality of life, our standard of living grows constantly because the human mind, human reason is endless. There is no limit to our ability to think and produce and create new, better, wonderful things, better mousetraps constantly. We're constantly raising our own standard of living. We're constantly raising the standard of living of those who trade with us. And the people who I think are, are, are particularly valued in a capitalist society are the people who are the most productive, that is, create the most values. Whether those values are spiritual values or material values, it is the value creation and the trading of values that make those values accessible to all of us and enhance our, life, our lives. And to see the geniuses of production, the genius of production in the arts, the geniuses of production in, in business, the genius of production in any realm, they are the real heroes because they are the people who really change the world. They're the people who make the world a better place for all of us. So to me, the Steve Jobses of the world, the, 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 the you know, Elon Musk's potentially, but uh, certainly the Jeff Bezos of the world, they're the people who we should be tomorrow celebrating. And it's not just them. It's the amazing developers who build the real estate projects that we all live in and enjoy and thrive in. It's the people who are out there in agriculture making better and better and better food for us all to eat that is less expensive and more nutritious and more delicious. It's the great chefs at the great restaurants that we go to that enhance our lives, that are really good at what they do. And that's what differentiates them from everybody else. They're really good at what they do. They're the real heroes of our life. They go unthought about primarily because we tend to think that, yeah, we paid them. You know, I, I paid Bezos. I used Amazon. I paid the check. I pay with a credit card. He gets the money. What more does he need? Well, it's not what he needs. It's what you need. What you need is an understanding of how much value you're getting relative to how much value you're paying, you're getting much more than you're paying. And that's true of any great achievement out there. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.